Hi, Kevin Leeds Harmonica. This is Harmonica Miscellanea. And as promised last week, I am going to talk today about some practical tips to help you get improvising. Chicago Blues on the harmonica. <clears throat> so before I begin, I'm just going to briefly mention my journey. I can't remember there was ever a point where I couldn't improvise and then suddenly I could. What I was doing at the time I was playing harmonica all the time. Um, I, I went. I was mildly obsessed for about, <laughs> I might say mildly, I was obsessed for about five years and I really just threw myself, it's all I was thinking about is harmonica all the time, playing, listening, all that stuff, um, and going through Barrett's course in particular. His chorus form concept is wonderful for learning to improvise, it's a wonderful tool for learning to improvise, it gives you a structure. And I was working my way through that, and I think just as a process of playing and playing and playing and listening and listening and listening and applying this chorus form concept, which I found really exciting, I just kind of got there. And I've since helped a lot of other people find their find their own own way to being able to do this. Okay, so I'm, I've got some pretty loose headings. Uh, I'm going to go through them. Number one, know your structure. Know your 12-bar blues. If you're not familiar with the chord changes and the uh, the rhythm, the, how to count through a 12 bar blues, then you aren't ready to start trying to improvise, okay? We need to, need to understand this. You need to be able to tell where you are in the blues, what chord change is approaching, what you're gonna be expected to play over. So a good familiarization with the 12 bar form is essential. The other thing that you're gonna need, and I'm gonna call this number two, scales are really useful here. What scales do is they give you a guarantee of how you're gonna sound. If you pick and only play notes from the blues scale in your lick, it's gonna sound bluesy because of the blues notes, especially if you're wailing on the uh, four draw bend and uh, three draw half step bend. If you pick those notes, you're not gonna fail, okay? It's gonna sound okay. And it isn't gonna be important that you're not necessarily sure what you're about to play because you know that the next note isn't gonna take the train off the tracks. Might not sound fantastic, but it will keep you in the game. The other thing that scales do is they give you a pathway for navigating the harmonica. If you're comfortable going up and down a scale and sort of jumping in and out of it, you can find anything you need really in there, in an improvising situation to do whatever you need to do to play a convincing chorus. Scales are really powerful and you don't need to learn many. If you learn the, the blues scale, minor pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale, and I guess the major scale as well, that's really, that'll carry you a very long way, a very long way in Chicago blues. Number three. I think we're up to. Go simple, go slow. If you've got the software to do it, make your jam track 10, 15% slower. You wanna give yourself time to think about what you're doing. Similarly, you want to pick licks that you know well. When we're improvising, and this is very important, we are not generally making stuff up on the spot in a, in a burst of creative vision that arrived out of nowhere. What you're doing is you're taking things you've already played, i.e. licks you know, and you're repurposing them. You're sticking them in maybe a different place in the blues, uh, or over a different backing track than you're used to playing it. So if you pick something simple that you know that's well within your technical capability, that is a good place to start because you're on familiar ground already. And the process then becomes, okay, that's my lick. If we've got something going, let's say, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Da 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 Okay. Ba da 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 So that's just a, uh, a little melody, a little, I know I'm not playing the harmonica here, but it's a little lick I came out with, I could play it on harmonica. Da 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 da
da, 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 da. So that's our lick. How about we start making some changes? Ba, da, 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 da. Change the end few notes, right? Just laid on the uh, root for a bit, the octave it was supposed to be. I don't know how well my singing's coming over. Uh, or try this. Sticking something else in there. You could take the front off. One, two, three. Da, 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 da. Um, all just ways of playing with the melody, okay? That's what you need to be able to do. Number four. This is psychological more than anything else. Your brain's telling you you're going to fail. You start to panic and then inevitably fail. What you want to do is give yourself permission to fail. I use the word fail. Um, I, I mean when you don't play something that sounds as good as you probably want it to. You need to give yourself permission to fail because you need to fail to make the mistakes you need to make so that you can learn. So as well as giving yourself permission to fail, you also need to be self-reflective, look at what you're doing, decide what's good about it, decide what is in there that doesn't sound the way you want it to, so that you can work on a way of remedying. This is why recording yourself is really good. No one ever wants to record themselves, but I promise you it is the most effective way of analyzing your own play. You record yourself today, improvising, and then you spend two weeks practicing it and you record yourself again, you will be better. You might not feel that you got any better, but you definitely, definitely will be. Record yourself. Don't be afraid of space. We should be playing shorter licks so that you give yourself time to think about what's coming next. The temptation is always to, oh, I've got to get, oh, I've got to do something, I've got to do something here. You don't. You can leave space. It's okay. Give yourself a little bit of time to think about what's coming next, especially if there's a chord change coming up. Some sort of quick general tips now, specific to harmonica. I've completely lost count of where we are, so I'm just going to rattle through some titles here. Target notes. This is where you pick a hole and you say, I'm going to base my lick around that hole. It doesn't mean that that's the only hole you're going to play. It doesn't mean that your lick needs to be saturated with just that note. It simply means that that's the note you're thinking about. Maybe it's the note you're starting on. Maybe it's what you want to make a feature of. Maybe you want to end up there. A, a, a good tip, by the way, is to finish your licks on two draw because that brings it back home and always works. But if you bear in mind that one note that you're concentrating on and just try and build your licks around that, you don't have to stray a long way away. Next, textures. These are your slaps, your octaves, your pulls, your double stops, your shakes, your glissandos, all of the things we do as harmonica players to drag a little bit more sound out of the harmonica and, uh, and use those chordal multi-note effects that the harmonica does so well. You can transform the way a lick sounds by sticking a couple of octaves in there. Try change it. If you've got a note that lasts a beat or two, change it for a shake. It might sound great in the middle there, just a little quick shake. You could do ornamental bends, start bent and come up to the note that you're after. All of the little tricks and techniques we learn as harmonica players, you can use here to your advantage. If you play the same lick very plain and then play it with a load of textures, it's like having a free lick. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it'll sound different enough. Next, repetition and call and response. If in doubt, repeat what you just did. Basically, that works quite well. It gives you time to think. It sounds good. Blues is very repetitious music. And if you repeat something, it gives it power and validity. If you think of the, I, the, the most obvious example that I always use, think of the, uh, the Manish Boy lick, or the Amaman lick. Da, 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 da. 
da, 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 da. It's all it does. Uh, but you won't forget that lick, right? It's good. It, you're going to go home humming it. Whereas you won't if you've just heard a few notes strung together once. And you never hear it again. This is why songs have choruses. And call and response. This is like the question and answer style that Blues had, has. So if you say starting first four bars, you could make a statement in the first two and answer it in bars three and four. Example. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, do. Do, 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 do. It doesn't have to be exactly um, a riff on what you've just played. You just need to set up that structure, make a statement, answer it, okay? Little musical conversation with yourself. Dynamics. This is the difference between the loudest sounds you make and the quietest ones. And there is a huge amount of emotion to be found by playing with the dynamics. It sounds soulful. So for example, if you've got a, a long rising lick, you could start it very quietly and increase your breath, breath pressure as the lick goes on, as it reaches its crescendo. You could do the same thing over a whole chorus. You could start the chorus really quietly gradually build, gradually build. So at the end, it's it's a big, powerful blues thing. And similarly, when you go from playing really loud and aggressive to playing soft and a little bit sweeter, you give your music some dimension. You give it a sense of progression. Almost impossible to overuse this and well worth spending some time with. Lastly, and most importantly, do not torture yourself over this it this needs to be fun and if you're not having fun you're either doing it wrong or it's not for you it's you know and there's nothing wrong with that give yourself time this takes a long time i mentioned last time this is a process your progress will sneak up on you i would recommend entirely studying barrett's chorus form concept obviously i can help you with that drop me a line Learn your scales, learn the 12 bar blues, start making small adjustments to licks that you already know and take it from there. Loads more to be said on this. Um, I've been chatting for ages now, so I'm going to shut up. Please have fun <clears throat> and enjoy. Any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions. Please, actually, I'll tell you what, the best place to ask questions is on the Patreon. So if you join the Patreon, you can ask me a question anytime you like, and I will uh, do my very best to answer it. Life, Love and Blues Harmonica Licks on Tuesday. I'm done for now. See you later. <laughs>